Shalom, everybody. So I'm doing this uh, video, this short video, to just uh, talk about the origin of the celebration of Hanukkah. And the question is, uh, does the miracle of the oil really happen or not? What's going on? Why is this, this celebration? Sometimes it's, it's controversial. Some celebrate it, some don't. So we're going to uh, talk about it and to see what is, what is it. So it's true that this uh, Hanukkah celebration is not from the Bible, it's not from the Torah, it's not a mitzvah commanded, but it's a celebration that has been made, which we call it the Rabbanan, meaning by the rabbis who decided to, to, to institute this celebration. Because it commemorates the victory of um, Levitical family, the Hashmonaim, against the Greek, that were at the time ruling in Israel. So although this is not in the Torah, this celebration is very important as we're going to see because it really signified the victory. Uh, it's like a spiritual fight against the darkness. It is the fight from the light against the darkness. And the darkness, which kind of darkness? A darkness of a world without God. So the name of this celebration is the Feast of the Lights. The Feast of Hanukkah is, has a high uh, teaching potential because even the word in itself, Hanukkah, comes from a root, chanoch, that means to teach. Like, for instance, we'll read in Proverbs 22, it says, teach the young boy, chanoch, teach him. Hanukkah is like a teaching. And we can read the Psalm 31, that the Hanukkah Tabait is the dedication of the temple. This is the origin of the word. So the story of Hanukkah commemorates the victory of this family against the, the Greek on the 25th of Kislev, which is tonight for us in Israel, it's tonight. In a few hours, we are going to light the first candle. We can read the story of the Maccabees in the book of the Maccabees and in the writing of the historian Flavius Josephus, who wrote at the time of the Roman Empire. But the Bible alludes to it a few times. First of all, the 25th word of, in the Torah is the word light, or, which is like the 25th of Kislev, the purification of the temple. Then the word Hanukkah, you can cut it in two, meaning em, Hanukkah means they, they rested on the 25th of the month of Kislev. The chapter 23 of the book of Leviticus is consecrated to the biblical feast, and then it's directly followed by the mitzvah, the commandment to, to make the oil that served to purify the temple. In the chapter 33 of the books of Numbers, the 25th step station of the Bnei Israel were that of Hashmona, which is the same root than Hashmonaim family. And then we can read in John 10, 22, that Yeshua was walking in the colonnades of the temple of Shlomo, Shlomo temple, when it says um, they came, then came Hanukkah in Yerushalayim, it was winter. Winter is the name, the word, the months of Kislev. So this, the celebration of Hanukkah is celebrated since the victory of the Ashmanian, like a victory of the Torah, of the word of God, against the darkness of the Greek culture that we are going to just touch a word. So Judaism really assimilates the Greek empire to one of the four great exiles that the Jewish people had to suffer. The first was the Babylonians with Nebuchadnezzar who destroyed the first temple. Then the Persian one with the story of Purim, then the Roman one. And the fourth, which is, precedes the, the Roman one is the Greek one. And those four exiles are also alluded in the first verse of Genesis when it says, the earth was unformed and void. Tova vo'u, darkness, choshech, was on the face of the deep, to, and the spirit of God hovered over the surface of the water. Those four exiles were four tentatives of destroying the Jewish people. The first is 
the soul, nafshi, with the Babylonian. Nebuchadnezzar wanted that the people would be totally submitted to him, soul and body. The Jews refused, so it, the first time was destroyed. Gufani, which is the body, it was under the Persian domination with Haman, who wanted to destroy everybody. It was the story of the Queen Esther. Then Slichli, intellectual, under the, the assimilation of the Greek with the Hellenization. And then the Akol, means the whole, is with the Roman Empire, which destroyed the second temple and in which we are still not totally out until the temple will be rebuilt. So the Greek exile is associated with the Chosher, the darkness. The darkness because this power tried to destroy the very essence of the Jewish people and the biblical land of Israel. They decided they wanted to convert them through Hellenization. They forbade the, the reading and the teaching of the Torah, the circumcision, the, the Shabbat practice, and all the, the, the biblical feast. And they would try to taint, to really destroy the, the family by forcing the young woman before the night of their wedding to sleep with the, the Greek officer, really wanting to destroy everything from the Jewish people, from the Israelite people. So in 338, before our era, Philip the Macedon, Philip of Macedon, invades Greeks to the north, and then he absorbs Athenas and all the different city-states in his empire. And then two years later, his son Alexander, who will become Alexander the Great, takes the power. He will be so powerful and like fulgurant, and then he will have an empire that will that will make him like a legend, the Alexander the Great, from Athena, from the Greece until India. And of course, it encompassed Israel and Egypt. So this fourth century also marked the, the golden age of the Greek culture, the start of the democracy, the Aristotle, Socrates, all the Greek philosophy, and Alexander was in love with all the Greek culture. And not only he wanted to have a, a big empire, but he wanted all these empire to really get this Hellenization, this, this set mindset, the Greek mindset that really adorns the creator instead of the creator. Then Alexander created cities and he brought Greeks there and then he conquered Judea and from the, the hand of the Persian empire. At his death, he would die very young, his generals, they just split the kingdom and there were two of them, Ptolemy and Seleucus. They, they split um, the, the north and the south and Ptolemy took Judea and he went into war with Seleucus. He took Jerusalem on a Shabbat and he didn't find any opposition because at the time Jews didn't want to desacralize, um, desecrate uh, Shabbat, so they didn't fight. Following this event, the sages say that now it is mandatory even to fight on the Shabbat if the whole nation is in danger. So in the year 200 before, Ptolemy IV was um, fought by Antiochus III from the Seleucid Empire. And then it was his son Antiochus IV, who was uh, named Epiphanus, splendid or the divine manifestation that took the throne. He was a cruel and despot king. And he really, the pressure that he made on the Jewish people during his reign became very, very unbearable. The book of Daniel and Maccabee talk about the, the rise of Alexander the Great and then of Antiochus IV. He destroyed the service of the temple. He destroyed all the sacred oil that was meant to lit the menorah that had to light each day, each day, each day the, the light of the menorah had to be lit. So he destroyed everything, circumcision, observance of Shabbat, kashrut, study of Torah, everything was forbidden. He, he decided it was mandatory to participate to pagan cults. And then on, on the 15th of Kislev, there was an altar that was dedicated to Zeus, set before the altar of God in the temple. And on the 25th of Kislev, the first pagan sacrifice was offered on that altar. 
he really dreamed to become a second Alexander. And then he, he had the help with some local Jews that were totally Hellenized and, did, and just sold themselves to the Greek empire. And then in, they destituted the legitimate Cohen Gadol, the great Celtic character, and they put his, his brother, Jason, he, was, he wasn't Hellenized, and he, he even changed his name from Yehoshua, which was very, it's like the name of Yeshua, by Jason. But the, the, some, some Levitical family decided that they would oppose this dictator. And they started to study by hiding in caverns and so. And then they, they went into revolt, they rebelled because one day they were in the city of Modi'in, Matichao was a, a priest. He was the father of five sons. He, he rebelled against the Greek who had ordered to sacrifice a pork on the altar in the city of Modi'in. So the revolt started in 175 our, before our era. And then the Jews started to fight, hide everywhere and fight this dictator, this Greek dictator who wanted to, to eliminate the very root of the Jewish nation. After many battles, Yehuda, one of the son of Metitia who died, at the end of the year 165 BC, he came into Jerusalem and purified the temple. The, the pagan statues were destroyed, the old altar was rebuilt, but this is what when the story of Hanukkah comes in, it is told that the, the oil to, lit the, to light the menorah was missing. There was not enough light. So Yehuda would have used one, would have found one little jar, which was still sealed and kosher, and then he lit the menorah that lasted for eight days with this only one day little jar of oil and it gave time to make some more oil. That was the miracle of Hanukkah. So this, this is what we celebrate today. Today we light the candles for eight days. But the th question is, is this miracle true? Is it not true? What are the sources that we have? So the more recent source that we have is Flavius Joseph, Josephus. It was as the first century of our era, but it is not a primary source because it was written much, much later. The second source we have is Megillah Ta'anit, not detracted from the Talmud, but Megillah, the scroll. Professor Vered Noam from Tel Aviv University made um, very interesting um, inquiry on the topic. And uh, they said that this Megillah is maybe the most ancient document that we have even preceding the Talmud. And uh, one is written in Aramaic and the second in Hebrew, which is mean that it was written by two uh, sources. And the first part will be like Aramaic coded. And then the second part is called the scolion. Scolion meaning a commentary of the coded part of the coded first part. So the source of Hanukkah is in the Megillah Tanait, Tanit, Tanit, and Veran Noam uh, writes that this column was written during a long period of time until the Middle Age. So the miracle of the, of the oil wouldn't be really true. So the second source is in the book of Maccabee 1 and 2. The two books were written only a few years after the story of Hanukkah, which is a primary source, very interesting. And then the other source that we have is in the prayer that we call al Hanisim, meaning for the miracles that we, leave, we read on Hanukkah, but we don't really know the origin to. Then the last, last, last of the source is in the tractat, tractate, uh, Shabbat in the Talmud of Babylon. So what do those sources say? I'm not going to read everything, just going to read a few words that are in uh, Maccabee 1 and 2. Maccabee 1. So Judah and his brother are coming. They are coming to purify and consecrate the temple. And they, they say, they ask, what do we do to the altar of the Holocaust that has been profaned? And then they, are, they purify the hotel. They build another one. They light the, the lamps of the menorah that lights in the temple on, in the month of Kislev. Then the altar was consecrated anew. Then they dedicated the Hanukkah, the, 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 the altar, Hanukkah Mizbeach, for eight days. 
and then they offered the Holocaust with joy, sacrif uh, sacrifices of uh, thanksgiving and the praise and so, and so on and so forth. And they decided that since now for eight days, starting each 25 Kislev, the celebration will be made. So what do we have? Three years after the Greek has profaned the Mikdash, the Hashmonaim came and purified it. So in the, the text we just read, it is mainly mentioned about the altar. Eight days, by why is the eight day a reason? Why, what is the reason for eight days? It, it doesn't say. It doesn't say for why eight days, okay? So the, the main celebration was to offer sacrifices, like the Thanksgiving sacrifices, which was bringing all the people together to be one again, to celebrate. It was like they were making barbecues all together. But there's no mention of the candles and no mention of the, of the donuts, no, no, man, no mention of this, okay? So let's say that the number eight in Judaism is very important because six is the number of men, seven is the natural number in which God manifests himself, the seven day of week of the weeks and so on. Eight is above nature. It's uh, the number that points to the heavens, to a spiritual world. So let's see now two Maccabees. So for the moment, we don't know why we celebrate eight days. It's two Maccabees now, they came, they purified, they offered a sacrifice, they lit the lamps, and then the, the temple was profaned on the 25th of the month of Kislev, and they celebrated eight days, a feast to the way of the tabernacles, Sukkot. They're mentioning Sukkot now. They remembered that they had been celebrating Sukkot when they were in mountains and so, and even when they were hiding from the Greeks. That's why they brought old branches and palms and all those, those uh, minim, those species, vegetation that we bring to Sukkot also, similar to this. And then they celebrated and they said that we will celebrate for eight days. So it speaks, it speaks now about the purification of the altar, but it does, it speaks of eight days, but what is the reason for eight day? We still don't know. And now all of a sudden they include Sukkot and the celebration of Sukkot. So they celebrated Chanukah like Sukkot. Like they were hoping on what is Sukkot? Sukkot is the gathering of all the people, is the celebration of the joy, is the celebration that Messiah will celebrate. Okay, so we still don't know why eight. Now we have Flavius Josephus, but here it was written much later. And he apparently took the text from Maccabee 1 and copy paste it and doesn't give the answer. Neither, we still don't know why eight. So then we have the Megillah Tanit. Tanit says, why eight days? So what is the answer? We needed eight days for the Hashmonaim to build a new menorah. Okay, doesn't really say much neither. So then later we have our sources from the Talmud Babylon, Tractate Shabbat, that was written much later and even compiled all together in year, 507 years our era. And it talks about the purification of the temple for eight days. Why eight days? The answer is because of the miracle of the oil. And then the prayer Alanisim, mentions the victory against the Greek, the military victory against the Greeks. So we have two main things. We have the eight day celebration of the oil that came, it's a reason that came much later. And then we have the Anisim, the celebration against the Greeks. So only the Talmud of Babylon mentions the miracle of the oil. This is why it said that it didn't really occur. It would have been an invention of the sages from Babylon in the Talmud. So why, why would they do this? We need to understand the meaning, the deep meaning of Hanukkah. The main, the main reason, the main victory was the victory against the Greeks. That was the first miracle because it changed totally the political historical face of Israel who became independent one more time for nearly hundred years. Uh, with the destruction of the first temple, the Babylonians exiled Judah. Then after the, the, there was the Persian 
exile and they were not sovereignty in the land of Israel. It was the story of Esther. And then after the Greek came and now the Hashmonai managed to have the victory and to give back the autonomy to Israel. Because the victory was not only military, okay? Because the military is one thing that is physical force. But in order for Israel to win, it has to have the help of above, which is the miracle of the oil. A miracle is needed to have the victory here on the land. And the Hashmonaim, because they stood for the Torah, they stood for the word of God, they stood for their identity, the miracle happened. And this is why we celebrate it. So it was the, the victory on the, of the light against the darkness, against the victory of the faith, against the oppression. And with the destruction of the second temple, the exile and in the nations and the, the coming back that was announced in the Torah and the prophets of the Jewish people on, on its land, in Eretz Israel, it was important for the sages to signify that this coming back, this restoration would be and would be the operation of a miracle made not only by a military intervention, but mainly by the the Koach Elyon, the superior strength that coming from God, of course. So the word Hanukkah, as we said at the beginning, is a word that means to educate, to initiate. It is, the, it is associated to the dedication of the temple and it helps us to understand the deep victory of the story of Hanukkah. The feast of Hanukkah just initiates us to the rule of the unique God, of, to, the, to the rule of the Kadosh Baruch Hu, of the Messiah that will come and rule on the earth, on the earth and on, in Israel. And when the Greeks, they wanted to prevent the Jews to light the, the menorah that represents the Ruach HaKodesh and to study Torah that represents the word of God, they wanted to destroy this coming kingdom. They wanted to remove, to, to extirpate all root of divinity in the land of Israel and in the Jewish people. So one of the more prophetic aspects of the Feast of Hanukkah was the restoration of the monarchy after all those times of exile. And this victory just foresees the instauration of the monarchy of the King of Judah that will soon ruin. Today we are in darkness. We are even in dictature. Dictature is just getting ready everywhere in all the world. So we have really to stand to who we are in God. And Hellenism wanted to destroy the coming of the King of, of Judah and the Messiah. The word Yavan, Greece, is written with three letters, Yud, Vav, Nun, they are descending. They, they are the same word letters that the word Zion, which is only with the tzaddik at the beginning. And the letter tzaddik in Hebrew means the righteous, the righteous. So it is with the righteous, with Yeshua, the Messiah, that the initial light that was created before the light of the sun and the moon, it this really this light is going to come back. And Yeshua was alluding to it when he was walking in the in the colonnades of uh, the Solomon at the in the month of Kislev for the feast of Hanukkah. So what do we think? Do we have to celebrate uh, Hanukkah? Do we have to light the candle? It's not written in the Torah. It's not a commandment. But is it interesting for us to light it? I think so. You know, I think I want to celebrate this light of this feast of lights. I want to celebrate his light, his Torah. I want to celebrate, I want him in my house. Tonight I'm going to light my first candle. I'm going to bring the light of Messiah in my house. And Yeshua spoke to them again. I am the light of the word. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light which gives life. This is the life I want. And if today the word is in the darkness, in the Greek darkness, assimilation, and want to take us a direction that is not the biblical one, we need to meditate when we're going to light this first candle because from the obscurity will come forth the light. In, in, the, in the Bible, first of all, you have the chosher, the darkness, and then the light. Then God say, let be the light, and there was light. And this is my prayer that the, the light of Messiah will shine in all the households 
on all planet in order to dispel all this darkness I was trying to cover us today. So that's the little message for Hanukkah. So I'm just inviting you to, to dive more into the studies of Hanukkah and you can read our book that we made on Hanukkah. There is a description in the video uh, down below. I will wake up your sons or Zion against your sons or Yavan, Greece. So just su subscribe to our YouTube channel and all together we're going to shine from his light. Chanukah Sameach, Shalom, and thank you.